If you want to build your Toyota production system, then listen to this presentation all the way through. It will take black belts, green belts, and potential industrial engineers. I will use these experts and guide them and you through the experience of building your production system. The name of this presentation is not wholly on the level. You cannot create your own Toyota production system, nor would you want to. Toyota's system is focused on creating an optimal environment for the production of automobiles. Toyota's business is non-diversified like a bank or insurance company. These businesses would benefit by building one production system around their core product or service. This differs from companies like General Electric and Lockheed. These conglomerates need a production system for each unique division. Today I'm going to discuss aspects of the Toyota production system that will apply to any business. The presentation is followed by a bibliography of the relevant material I used to build this presentation. The building of a production system is complex and this presentation is only going to skim across the top. Because the material is extensive, the presentation will contain a lot more discussion than slideware. Jim Fitzgerald is from Lean Business and is a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and Innovation Master. When you start the build of your production system, its success is based on your corporate history. Let's go through what I'm going to talk about today next. I will start off with a short discussion of Toyota's history, since it is intimately entwined in the development of their production system. I will also discuss the prerequisites of the company that is interested in building their own production system. Next, I will take time discussing the guiding principles that Toyota relies upon to give them direction and accountability. There is a pathway to excellence that you must follow in order to achieve the operational excellence that Toyota enjoys. The ability to build your production system extends beyond the walls of your business. That and other topics are discussed last. One important aspect of the Toyota production system is that it brings to bear the totality of Toyota on the production of automobiles. They have no doubt about what their business is. If you are in a single focus business, such as an insurance company, the concept of a production system would work well. If you are a conglomerate, then a single production system would be too unfocused and it would make sense to have a separate production system for each business unit. This is what I refer to as a maniacal focus on business. Toyota benefits through the use of extreme talent. They not only have extreme talent, but they use extreme talent and they grow extreme talent. You cannot be a leader without extreme talent. For instance, Taichi Ono, with a group of Toyota employees, visited a world-leading Ford automobile manufacturing plant after World War II. Toyota went to Ford to learn. What they noticed was that Ford dedicated lots of plant space for pulling off products due to defects. Taichi Ono knew that Japan was very materially poor and that Toyota could not produce enough cars to make a profit if they had the same level of waste that Ford had. Taichi Ono made a highly risky proposal that employees stop the assembly line if they came across a defect and did not start the assembly line until they had found the source causing the defect and either fixed it or created a workaround. This caused massive assembly line downtime, which was contrary to manufacturing best practices at the time. This philosophy has ultimately led to the high quality and lean manufacturing of Toyota automobiles today. At one point in Toyota's history, their company was at peril and subsequently decided that they needed to lay off many union employees. The short story is that the union balked. The result was that some union employees were laid off, some Toyota management, including the CEO, stepped down, and the remaining employees were guaranteed lifetime employment. Toyota was forced into this position. However, it has ultimately given them a competitive advantage. All of Toyota's employees are vested in improving Toyota, and Toyota uses that as a competitive advantage. Toyota has a mature continuous improvement program. Back before it was so mature, they averaged 11 improvement ideas per person per year. Every improvement idea is a change. Think of how much change Toyota absorbs every year. Toyota has a lifetime commitment to their employees, and their employees have a lifetime commitment to Toyota. Not every business is capable of the greatness of Toyota. Let's overview some of the prerequisites needed. It's not clear that Toyota started with a commitment to greatness. During the over 70 years of their history, 
now there is an instilled commitment to greatness. Implementing a production system is not quick, nor is it simple. It requires a commitment to greatness. That's what moves you through the low points. Leadership must be able to supply the corporate vision. Greatness is a culture that requires a vision. Since vision is an integral part of the continuous improvement program, then visionary thought will be taught. Since a vision is a look into the future, it cannot be precise, but leadership needs to be looking in that direction. You can't bolt on a culture. It is something that must be developed. Part of that culture will include your continuous improvement program. It includes a vision, and a big part of it also includes your corporate history. Culture helps point everybody in the same direction. A strategic focus on your culture is a prerequisite. Since a big step of building a dynamic production system is reliant upon every employee, everyone must be fully engaged. John Shook, a past employee of Toyota, said that everybody in the company is an expert at what they do. Respect between different levels of employees is key to a successful production system. Just as a problem should be looked at as an opportunity to improve, learning should be looked at as a way to increase corporate knowledge. Learning is what lets you accelerate continuous improvement, and it also is seen as one of the three pillars of innovation. When I worked in biochemistry, I always thought there should be a journal on experimental failures. Think of failure as an opportunity to learn. A culture of learning is critical. Mistakes are not failures, but a systematic part of learning. If mistakes are looked upon as a failure, then the willingness to take risk is mitigated. Toyota's production system is ingrained in their culture. Also ingrained in their culture are 14 guiding principles. Let's discuss those next. Every production system needs guiding principles. Guiding principles can do many things. It can define how management operates. It can define how all employees operate. It helps shape the culture and also the direction of the company. It also defines roles and direction. Toyota's 14 guiding principles, also known as the Toyota Way, are for Toyota and their business. When you make your production system, your guiding principles direct your business. Toyota's guiding principles are just an example. I have divided them between operating principles and management principles. There seem to be many more management principles. But Toyota's operational principles. The first one on the list is to create continuous flow. Flow has a specific meaning for Toyota. Flow at Toyota means that the time when the upstream process is finished processing is the same time that the downstream process is ready to start processing. Flow is difficult to achieve but is useful as a great vision. Flow requires that the processing time of the two processes are the same. When flow is created between two processes, any sort of problem immediately comes to the surface. Pool is a fundamental shift in how a business operates. Some businesses, because of their business, will not be able to implement a pool system. The global view of pool means that your business system does not start working until a customer places an order. On a process level, pool means that the downstream process requests the output of the upstream process when a downstream process is ready. There are some fundamental advantages with pool. One is that you don't create inventory for a phantom customer. Two is that it is faster than a push system where the upstream process keeps dumping their output on the downstream process, whether the downstream process is ready or not. Every push system creates an opportunity to investigate pull. Your business creates a workload on the business system. Optimizing your production system includes making a strategic effort to level out the workload. Toyota in Japan does this through their customer relationship. This is a goal and not easy, but by making it a guiding principle, there is a constant focus on improving it. Toyota refers to tasks, and I think of those as activities. A set of tasks or activities make up a process. It makes sense to standardize process activities since you could use it to implement best practices. What you may not realize at this point is that a standard activity represents the current state of an activity for continuous improvement. Everyone should standardize on the best way to perform an activity. Visual control is just what it sounds like. It creates an obvious environment that guides you through your activity. It could be signage, it could be a layout, or it could be easy reading of a fluid level. Visual control is something that can be improved over time. 
Next, we will start looking at the management focus of the guiding principles. Since there are nine guiding principles that focus on management, I've separated them into two slides. There is no particular order to these guiding principles. You might feel like we've picked the hardest guiding principles to talk about first, and that may be. At Toyota, they focus long-term, and they have found that they can attain their short-term goals by doing this, and it also increases their competitiveness. There are some American companies that do this, and one is an electronic company that is constantly leading in their industry. This is a balance between short-term and long-term thinking. Consider shifting that balance towards long-term. I think the hardest word in this next principle is stop. There is a lot of pressure in a normal business to meet a production milestone. There is also a penalty for making a milestone by producing defective products and services just to meet that milestone. Whether it's claims processing or manufacturing, the only way to focus people on quality is to make it part of the culture. The Toyota production system has a way of operating that is part of their culture. This makes it easy to grow leaders that understand their philosophy. What is equally important is that those leaders teach the philosophy or culture to their employees. This is part of a two-way street of respect. In the Toyota production system, the adoption of technology is very deliberate. Toyota does not look for every opportunity to apply automation. Let's look at the next slide that highlights this point. This is an example of two hospital rooms. One of these hospital rooms is in a country where the mortality rate is less, as is the infant mortality rate. That country, of course, is Denmark. Obviously, the number of gizmos you can plug into a hospital room does not positively affect the two most major healthcare metrics. To be fair, there's a lot more differences than hospital rooms, but this is an example of an area to reassess how you invest. This is the second half of the management principles and concludes the list of the Toyota Production System 14 guiding principles. One of the Toyota Production System's greatest challenge is expansion. This is because that requires you to bring in new people that don't understand how the production system works. Employee development has many advantages and Toyota takes advantage of these. Every business system connects to suppliers and partners for input. These relationships are referred to as a supply chain, but they must be much more than that if you're going to optimize your production system. Just to give you an example, I was watching a video of a motor manufacturer and they were showing different employees in their plant measuring and testing components that had come from a supplier. When you think about it, who better to test those supplies than the supplier? If the motor manufacturer had a strong relationship with their supplier, they would not only rely upon the supplier to do the quality measurements, but they may actually move employees into the supplier's operations to help them more efficiently connect with the production system. Suppliers and partners are a strategic part of your production system. Toyota's production system operates with about two hours of inventory from their suppliers. How much inventory are you storing unused at any moment? Suppliers and partners could be in the best position to suggest ideas to improve the flow in your production system. Create a strong working relationship with them. Go in and see for yourself is known as go to the Gemba. The reason given is that going and seeing a situation gives you a better understanding of your system's capabilities. The high level concept is that upper management periodically visits the locations where the business system adds value for their customers. This does two things. First of all, it shows those who are delivering value for your company that you care, and second, it gives you first-hand knowledge of how well you are operating. It's important that managers do not suggest solutions as they will be acted on immediately while pushing aside other work. An advantage of making decisions by consensus is that you obtain many different perceptions. This is taking advantage of diversity. Often decisions have long-term impacts, so testing the decision has value. However, once the decision is made, act quickly and move on to the next decision. Guiding principle number 14 may look as one guiding principle amongst others, but this is strategic for anyone implementing their production system. Later in this presentation, I'm going to discuss the brilliant way Toyota does continuous improvement and how learning is important. 
There are two places in Toyota's 14 guiding principles where they mention learning. Learning is key to improving. Let's discuss the pathway to a production system next. This pathway to a production system is applicable to any type of business. Though the steps may seem simple, they will define the way you run your business. Every process contains value-adding activities and non-value-adding activities. A vast majority of the activities in a process are non-value-adding activities. To improve value stream performance, it is much easier to focus on removing non-value-adding activities. In Lean Six Sigma, non-value-added activities are referred to as waste. You really define value by defining waste. Your business system contains both value streams and overhead. A value stream is one of the best inventions in the 20th century for business. Mapping a value stream involves following the flow from a customer invoice to customer delivery and documenting that. Passing a product or service from an upstream process to a downstream process can happen using three different methodologies. If your business is department focused, then it is the department's job to process as fast as possible. This is a push methodology and results in inventory piling up between processes. It is based on maximizing department performance. Pull is based on a customer invoice. Whether it's a request for insurance or for a new phone, pull means that the process of producing the service or product starts with a customer invoice. From a process point of view, it means that the upstream process delivers the product or service upon the request of the downstream process. This is faster than push and much more efficient. It is referred to as building one product or service at a time. Flow occurs when the upstream process and the downstream process have the same processing time. Therefore, when the downstream process is ready, the upstream process delivers its output. This is the optimum flow between an upstream and downstream process. This should be the condition to aspire towards. Perfection is just another word for continuous improvement. Your vision is perfection, which is the goal of continuous improvement. Let's look at defining value in more detail. Each process contains value-adding activities and non-value-adding activities. The non-value-adding activities usually outnumber the value-adding activities by 10 or 20 to 1. Therefore, improving performance predominantly focuses on removing non-value-adding activities. Lean Six Sigma uses an acronym to label non-value-adding activities. The acronym is downtime. Each letter represents a set of non-value-added activities. I will quickly go through these with examples. Defects could be blemishes or erroneous information. Overproduction is when you are producing product or service, but not for a customer. Waiting is pretty obvious, but is significant. Non-utilized talent represents all the capabilities you have in your organization that you are not harnessing. Continuous improvement harnesses their capabilities. Transportation can represent a forklift or moving a patient through a hospital. Inventory is excess supply sitting around from a supplier or product produced without a customer. Motion represents reaching, walking to get something, or turning around. Excess processing could be excess signatures required or the example I like, I went with my wife to the emergency room of a hospital and she was asked three different times what she was allergic to. Services represent all of the support functions, such as space and HVAC, that are used to support the above non-value added activities. Employees experience these wastes every day and might do something about them if they were taught to recognize them. That is the first step. Next, we discuss mapping the value stream. A business system contains value streams. Value streams contain processes and processes contain both value added and non-value added activities. A value stream follows a customer order through all the value adding at processes back to the customer. These paths exist in every company and they transcend departments. Business performance is based on value streams. Value streams give you critical information regarding where is the best place to focus your improvement efforts in order to improve value stream performance. Improving a department's performance or a process in a department may not improve value stream performance. 
The example below represents a city's billing permit process. This value stream starts with the request and flows through different departments and their processes until the request is satisfied. If you don't have a view of a value stream, then you are unlikely to be able to highlight the most strategic processes needing improvement. This is a view of the improved value stream. It starts with the web-based submittal system and logic to route the permit request. The next stage represents the billing permit operators who pull a request when they are ready. This represents an example of pull in a business setting. This example shows a reduction of time through the value stream of 380 minutes down to 40 minutes. Also a reduction of value time add of 33 minutes to 23 minutes. There is a myriad of examples of the performance improvement of a pool system. Pool is a goal, but not applicable in all cases. Pool through a value stream is easiest to implement if the customer orders or requests stay constant. Erratic customer requests can make pool very difficult. One goal of your production system is to level out customer requests. In the example below, the nature of building requests is relatively level day to day. The optimum business would flow value add for their customers. This precludes a pool system. Flow means that the downstream process receives the product from the upstream process right when it finishes its value add. Often manufacturing factories will attain flow in parts of their value streams. The same could be true for any business. When you implement flow, it will be easy to highlight any inefficiencies. Flow also allows you to see where to add resources to improve value stream performance. Though flow is difficult to implement, it represents a wonderful vision. Perfection is wonderful but unattainable. That makes it a perfect vision. Continuous improvement has many advantages. It aligns the whole company to march in the same direction. It engages everyone in the company. It, everyone in the company contributes to company success. It creates a culture of change. It creates a dynamic company. Continuous improvement is strategic. Toyota's kata policy propagation, realization, and continuous improvement is a key to Toyota's production system success. It's the reason that one of Toyota's CEOs could not write a book about the Toyota production system in general, but had to specify a year. Toyota's business changes so rapidly that it's hard to define. Kata means habit. Toyota has embedded kata in their culture to make it a habit. Because kata is part of the culture, it will benefit your company through the tenure of many CEOs. Let's take a quick look at the steps of kata continuous improvement. There is a lot packed into this one slide, but let me try to walk you through it. First, you start with your current condition, which represents your standardized process. Next, you determine the direction your improvement should take. That requires you to either have a challenge, which has a two to three year time frame, or a vision. Now that you know both your starting point and ending point, select a target condition that gets you part way. You have a target condition because the challenge to jump from the current condition to the challenge or vision is too great. The target condition has a goal and a time frame associated with it. The individual guiding the improvement effort from the current condition to the target condition can see part way on how to get there. That represents the knowledge border. The individual needs to determine what action to take when they reach the knowledge border to get all the way to the target condition. As an example, you might have a challenge to improve throughput or maybe to increase quality standards by 50% within two years. A vision could be to remove all non-value added activities. Let's review the organizational structure of Kata and see how it is applied to continually improve towards a challenge. The VP starts with a business goal of improving his processing by 50%. He makes this a two-year challenge. He does not know how to accomplish this but he knows how to stay competitive. This improvement is necessary. Fortunately, the value stream manager has a map of the current value stream. The value stream manager is a new position that focuses on the value stream performance, which is across departments. Depending upon the size of the company's value streams, a value stream manager may be responsible for multiple value streams, or the value stream manager may have other responsibilities also. However, in this example, the value stream manager understands multiple aspects of the value stream and has some ideas on how to attain the VP's goals. The value stream manager represents a coach to the process manager. Based on her value stream, she thinks that she can achieve a 25% performance improvement goal in process number two. 
She consults as a coach with the process manager and discusses her thoughts. He agrees and will own the process improvement effort with his operator. The process manager who owns Process 2 engages with the operator of Process 2 and discusses the requirement that Process 2 increase its performance by 25%. The operator knows that his process is in the middle of the critical path and has some ideas on how to improve its performance. He discusses this with his process manager and they set a target condition. Let's make an aside here. Toyota runs their assembly line as lean as possible. Their organizational structure is that they put the minimum number of people they can on their assembly line. This allows them to see what it takes to do the job. This leaves very little room for that team to perform continuous improvement. They fix this challenge by using a lead position that oversees multiple processes. This individual fills in should an employee be sick or go on vacation and also greatly supports the continuous improvement effort. The process manager, acting as a coach, asks his six coaching questions to help guide operations in the right direction. The process manager has more experience and is therefore in a position to guide operations in the most optimal direction. At this point, I'm going to discuss the strength of this arrangement and continuous improvement. This was an example of propagating a challenge down an organizational structure. There is nothing that stops the process manager from either creating a challenge or vision for the individuals in operations. In fact, the process manager should always be pushing operations for improvement. Also, the value stream manager should always be pushing the process manager to improve. The goal is to improve every process every day. Any one of these individuals at any time can issue a challenge for improvement. The value stream manager does not have to wait for a VP to propose improvements. I mentioned earlier that you improve towards a challenge or vision. The value stream manager may set a vision to constantly improve value stream performance or quality or cost. All of these things could be part of a vision. This structure is supported by a communication methodology and a teaching methodology. I recommend that you start with a focused improvement effort for your most strategic value streams. Once that effort has completed, roll out the Kata Continuous Improvement process. We start this section discussion with suppliers because they could be an integral part of your business. Next, we discuss the flexibility of the human and the reason to skinny down the value stream. AII is an effort to determine an acceptable improvement threshold. Lean production builds products for a customer. Auditing is important and its life cycle is discussed next, finally followed by the important system performance metrics that measure the pulse of your system. Let's discuss suppliers first. Suppliers are put into tiers based on their importance, their ability to respond, and their level of partnership with you. What you would like to have with your suppliers is a win-win partnership. Though not all suppliers are capable, and some suppliers aren't important enough for the effort. Throughout your business, you start to put in pool systems, but another critical area for pool is with your suppliers. A pool system with a supplier elevates that supplier to a key position with your company. The tier one supplier will deliver critical supplies on a negotiated schedule that leaves your company with a safe level of supply while minimizing inventory. Your company may have an investment in the supplier and may loan the supplier some employees to help them out. This supplier will deliver based on Kanban card as part of a pool system. The tier two supplier may deliver critical supplies but be incapable of delivering at the level of the tier one supplier. Another case could be that the tier two supplier is not as critical to your company as the tier one supplier. It may be that the tier two supplier could become a tier one supplier in the future. Everyone else is a tier three supplier. Suppliers should always be pushed to be more efficient. We know that some of their costs could go up every year, such as for employee salaries. Other costs should go down every year due to increasing efficiency. Write a contract with the supplier that decreases the supply purchase price every year. Trap when you go down the automation path. The day you plug in your automation solution is the day that the automation solution starts going out of date. Your automation solution cannot continuously improve. Also, your automation solution now limits the maximum velocity of your assembly line. 
The Toyota production system augments human capabilities wherever it can to improve performance. The human will learn new ways to perform their activities and also adapt to process improvement ideas. The point is not to avoid automation, but to use it judiciously. It's always a good idea to ask yourself the question, what would it look like if I was running most efficiently? Running most efficiently does not necessarily mean that it is sustainable. However, your optimum capability is something to know. One way to accomplish this is to pull as many employees off as you can off of the value stream processes. This will leave you with the minimum number of people needed to maintain your rate of production. This is exactly what Toyota does. The exact right number of employees to deliver the product or service is not sustainable because employees aren't always at work for various reasons. This condition is accommodated by having leads step in when employees are absent. Leads also help with continuous improvement because some workers will lack bandwidth. In summary, you determine your maximum efficiency by pulling all non-essential personnel off the value stream. You don't pay a penalty for this by using leads to augment them. The AII is the acceptable improvement increment. Determining your AII is important for a couple of reasons. First, it sets a boundary on a continuous improvement effort. And second, it makes you go through the effort of determining what performance level improvement has value. I have a presentation that I have attached to the end of this presentation that discusses what it takes to move from mass production to lean production. The good news about the move from mass production to lean production is that benefits accrue from almost the very beginning. Whereas mass production has been around for over 100 years, lean production has been around over 70 years. Mass production focuses on department performance. This may be the most significant challenge that mass production has. That's because when you focus on improving a department, that improvement leads to increased inventory. Also, mass production focuses on building a product or service to store as inventory. Lean production focuses on building a product or service for a customer. SLAI or SLAY refers to standardize, live, audit, improve. Standardization standardizes the best practice across the company, enforces repeatability, and lastly is the basis or starting point of a continuous improvement effort. Live validates the ability to operationalize the standard. In effect, you are testing the capability of the process. Audit is critical to validate that the standards are being executed. ISO 9001 focuses on this among other things. Where ISO 9001 refers to a quality management system as a set of processes focused on meeting customer requirements, those processes are actually aggregated into a value stream. It's important to post the process map for every process facing out so that someone walking by can look at the process map and see the individual performing an activity on that process map. This is an audit. In the sequence standardize, live, audit, improve, the improve step is critical. How that is performed was discussed earlier when I discussed the continuous improvement aspect of Kata. These system performance metrics apply to any business. Whether you produce books, electric motors, insurance claims, or any other sort of company, a good handle on these metrics will tell you how well your business system is performing. These metrics are predicated on and apply to value streams. The first metric, or value stream lead time, is a performance metric that tells you how long it takes to produce one product or service. The process cycle time is a performance metric that focuses on the process level. This is the time it takes a product or service to get through a specific process. All of the process cycle times for every process added together give you the value stream lead time. The third metric is a quality metric. Each process includes value add time and non-value add time. This metric pulls out the value add time. The value add time added to the non-value add time is the process cycle time. The fourth metric is extremely important. Each process has the opportunity to add a defect to the product or service. That defect will impact the process yield. By multiplying all the process yields together, 
you determine the rolled throughput yield or the percentage of high quality product at the end of the value stream. The fifth metric is also a quality metric. The amount of plant floor space dedicated for defect pull-offs is static and the size represents the level of defects expected. When General Motors and Toyota decided to build the NUMI plant, General Motors had designed it to have 17% SDDPO. Toyota designed it for 1% SDDPO. That tells you a big story right there. Tack time is a dynamic metric that you would like to be static and is based upon your customer's desire for your product or service. The tack time is the rate of product or service generation needed to satisfy customer demand. It is as dynamic as your customer demand is. Metric seven is the value stream production rate. This is simply the rate of product or service generation. The ideal VSPR would be slightly faster than the tack time. This is an efficiency metric. Eighth metric is an efficiency metric. The value stream inventory is just a measure of inventory in your value stream. This metric is more efficient if you subtract out the inventory that is currently being acted upon by any process. Doing this subtraction presents a value stream inventory number that represents inefficiency. There has been a tremendous amount of work performed to understand the Toyota production system. Some of the work has been around for a while and some is relatively new. It's hard to learn about the Toyota production system because of language and cultural differences. Fortunately, authors have been aggressive in their efforts to understand. Let's take a look at the bibliography. Womack et al. wrote the seminal book on Toyota's production system. The machine that changed the world showed the world how the history of Toyota developed it into a world-leading manufacturer of automobiles. Goldratt in The Goal taught us about overcoming bottlenecks and the advantage of small lots which are more responsive to customers. Leiker wrote The Toyota Way, which is a whole book dedicated to Toyota's 14 guiding principles. Rother authored three exceptional books. Learning to See overviews how value streams create profound knowledge of your business operations. Toyota Kata introduced us to the best and most powerful continuous improvement methodology in existence. Toyota Kata culture added knowledge about how Kata is not just used for continuous improvement, but also policy propagation and realization. The Lean Startup by Rees is something I added because innovation along with Lean Six Sigma can be very powerful. This innovation methodology is powerful because it uses customer feedback and fast iteration to optimize the product build. Tracy and Wiersma wrote a wonderful book that analyzed excellence in business. They found that excellent business leaders focused in one of three areas, innovation, operational excellence, or customer intimacy. Sometimes customers experience intimacy when they get their products or services performed quickly. That is really operational excellence. Lean Six Sigma creates operational excellence. The first thing to do is devise your strategic guiding principles. This creates the environment the company will operate in. It creates bounds and goals. W. Edwards Deming complained that business leaders do not have profound knowledge of their business processes. During Deming's time, it was processes. Today, it is value streams. By mapping your value streams, you create profound knowledge. This is how to run a company. Wherever you can, implement pool systems as they connect you with your customer and increase your operational performance. A business leader must react to a changing economy, a changing business market, and a changing workforce. Change is critical for business leadership and a culture of change is best instilled through continuous improvement. Kata creates this culture of change. I recommend that you start by selecting your most critical value streams, map them, and apply continuous improvement to them. Your least critical value streams are probably not worth the effort. You could certainly apply continuous improvement to them. The value streams between the most critical and least critical should be judged independently about whether the effort to apply value streams to them is worth it. This is Jim Fitzgerald from Lean Business a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt Innovation Master and expert on how Toyota became great.